I'd put Tony Cragg right at the top of world sculptors of any period. I think he's up there with the greatest sculptors of all time. He's got so many different styles that he looks like a group of artists, sort of ten great artists rather than one, because he's working in wood, in marble, in bronze, in steel, polished aluminium. He works with hooks, plastic, all kinds of stuff. He's just uh, insatiably curious, and he's just got a tremendous feeling for form, as any sculptor should. You could argue, well, why don't you just, you know, copy nature as it is? But I, I find it quite difficult to... I'm not really interested in just copying anything, so I try to sort of work from the inside out. So Tony was born in 1949 in Liverpool. He moved around as a child to um, Scotland and south of England following his parents. His father was uh, an electrical engineer working in the aircraft industry and ended up, in fact, uh, designing the, the electrical mechanism that makes the nose of Concorde go up and down. So inquisitive nature was part of Tony's growing up. He gets his inspiration from all kinds of things. I can just imagine sort of him walking along a road and a uh, plastic bottle, a bit of broken tyre, anything like that will, will inspire his curiosity. He's just uh, fascinated by materials, by the shape of things, what lies underneath the shape. Uh, and he would say that there's a huge amount of work that hasn't been done in all sorts of different areas by sculptors. We do only see the surface, we don't have x-ray vision, but at the same time, I think psychologically, we always want to find out what's underneath the surface we're seeing. You know, what, what is underfoot, or what is the energy of that material in front of you? Is it hot? You know, if it's an animal or a person, I mean, what's under the surface of that exterior? The work in the, made in the, in the 70s, there was a lot of found materials, you know, wood and metal, and, and another thing you find would be bottles. He's looking at the sort of things that we use and own and make continually, which are sort of uh, metaphors for our lives and our civilization. And if you think of Henry Moore as someone who'd go along uh, the beach and look for pebbles or bones or flints, this kind of thing, and then make sculptures which somehow respond to those objects, Tony Cragg is a sort of urban version of that kind of sculptor. The way the material is distributed in the world, in a sense, I mean, you have a sort of particular nature to things, you know, so you have, obviously, you have atoms, and then you have stars and s grains of sand on the beach, and that tends to end up in sort of stratifications. And those strata, they, you find that in the geology you're in, or the layers of the sky, or the layers of the skin, and everything around you, you end up, so these are kind of rough distributions or structures of, of material, the way you find it. So the two-dimensional surface, once you have stratification forming a skin, when it's extended, and at some point, inevitably, it meets up on itself, making a volume. In the late 80s, he started using bronze, casting in bronze, and what he was doing was taking those same objects, and you might get a shampoo bottle swirling around in a sculptural form, into uh, an oil can, that kind of thing. And it's just, uh, these are the inspiration which provide the drive to the work, but then it becomes completely artistic, and it's his, his head getting hold of these uh, objects and just doing something really crazy and magical and inspiring with them, as you can see uh, on the lawn in front of the Gallery of Modern Art. Uh, so something that's really basic and dull turns into something that's extraordinary. I mean, all material has certain physical properties and you can't get away from its colour. And the fact we, I mean, if you're looking at things, we only see things grace the fact that light reflects off a surface. And that light that comes into your eye from that reflection has been vetted, in a sense, by that material. And so if you're seeing green, it's only because the grass has absorbed all the other colours. It's not letting you see the other colours because it keeps them for themselves wood and bronze and they all have their colours and obviously and you can just leave them as they are but they change anyway in the climate in the in, with the light whatever i mean uh, materials are never neutral it's always changing so this exhibition at the scottish national gallery of modern art of tony craig's work i think is one of the, the best shows that we've ever done it's an exciting show to work 
uh, with him on. Uh, he's an amazing man, an amazing sculptor. And this is one of the great things about this exhibition, that uh, while he may be known for the work of the 1980s uh, internationally, I think his greatest work is happening now. So this exhibition brings to the British public uh, work they've never seen before and a completely different kind of work as well.